In Tadasana, eyes are closed. Let's just do a quick review. Lifting the arch. That means I'm bringing my ankles in towards one another, bringing a little more emphasis, emphasis to the big toe and the outer heel. At the same time, I'm gently rolling my knees to the outside, which also causes my hip bones to roll to the outside, opening up these channels of energy, but also aligning my ankle over my knee, the knee to hip, so I cannot hurt my joints. Soft knees, roll the shoulders up and back. Hands are by your sides. Fingers slightly open, but soft. Go ahead, open your eyes. Have a soft gaze in front of you. Chin is neutral with the floor. This is a beautiful standing posture where we really can feel the energy traveling from feet to top of head and back down again. Let's open up our palms. Inhale the arms up at the top, palms together. Hold here, drop the shoulders. Sink the shoulder blades down the spine and towards one another. Once you have that feeling, the sensation of sinking the shoulders, stretch through the fingertips without moving the shoulders. Feel grounded. Feel that big toe on the mat. Feel that slight rotation of the knee and hip exterior. Bring the hands together, and as you exhale, let's come to heart center. Anjali Mudra, a prayer pose. Thumbs are lightly touching the middle of our chest. If you felt your shoulders rounding, let's see if we can bring them down again. It takes time for this to become an automatic movement, so just be patient with yourself. Let's share the pranava three times to open our class. Take a breath in. Mantra chanting is as much an aerobic exercise in learning how to control the abdominals as we breathe as much as it is a subtle energy practice. Every time we exhale, we are gently contracting the abdominals. Let's think about that as we chant the shorter version of the Guru Mantra three times. Take a breath in. Om Hrim Shri Guru Bio Namaha Om Hrim Shri Guru Bio Namaha Om Hrim Shri Guru Bio Namaha Om Shanti 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 Exhale and release. Today we're focusing on flexibility or another word for relieving tension. So let's slowly go through a modified uh, sun salutation and uh, really focus on the different parts, the different poses within. Coming to Tadasana. Remember, your knees are soft here. Open up the palms. Let the shoulder blades sink down. Hold here. This is a wonderful pose right here just to let the muscle mind memory really sink in. Letting the joints and the muscles understand just how much tension they need to hold to be in a beautiful aligned posture. And continuing, inhale the arms up, look at your hands. Hold here, sink the shoulders. If you have a tendency to arch your back, Use that pelvic tilt that we practiced yesterday. And let's bring the rib cage in and the pelvis forward. Hands together, exhale to your heart. 
feel the balance here between both hands. Elbows are nice and loose, letting gravity bring them towards the mat. I haven't lost awareness of my big toe and outer heel. Back bends in stages. Inhale the arms up over your head. As you exhale, sink the shoulders. Inhale, let's grow tall from the pelvis, anchoring through the feet. As you exhale, only the shoulders come back behind us. If you tended to arch your back here, again, a small pelvic tilt that will also bring the rib cage in. Draw the shoulder bones uh, down. Inhale, grow tall. As you exhale, bring the head back and find your back bend. Keep lifting the heart up towards the sky. We should feel no tension in the lower back because we are lifting up, out, and back. It's a very, very active pose. I'm anchoring myself from the pelvis to the toes and heels. And then I'm feeling as light as I can as I lift up and stretch through the back. Coming out, inhale, come back to center. So we're back into Dasana, arms extended, drop the shoulders. Sink the shoulder blades, feel anchored. Bend the knees. Forward fold, bending from the hips as best we can. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you bend from the hip. I don't care where your arms are right now. They can be out wider in front of you. Take as long as you want. And let's come down into a forward fold, knees bent. Once you get to the bottom, just hang out there. Whether your hands are touching the mat or hands to elbows. Let's rock back and forth just a little bit. So you feel the difference when your hips are be behind your heels when they're over the heels, and when there's too much pressure on your toes, so you're too forward. Play with that a little bit, and then come to center where you feel that your hips are over your heels. Knees are still bent. Tuck the head. Stay here. Let this sink in for your body. Coming back to a back bend, let's do it in stages. Knees are bent as we come up. As you inhale, lift the head, lengthen the back. Extend the arms either to the sides or in front of you. Hinge from the hips. As you inhale, come up, your knees are still bent. As you come to the top, you straighten the knees. Exhale, sink the shoulder blades. Feel grounded here. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, release the shoulders behind you. Inhale, grow tall again. Exhale, find your back bend. If you come into the back bend, there's a tendency for the shoulders to creep up by our ears. Let's bring attention to the shoulder blades, sink them down again. But keep lifting. Be nice and light through the spine. Four, three, Two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Feel that alignment. Pelvis, lower spine, middle spine, upper spine. Relax shoulders and neck. Feel grounded through those big toes and outer heel. Slightly bend the knees. Forward fold. Take a breath in. As you exhale, feel yourself hinging from the hip. And as you're coming down, take as long as you want. Feel how you have to make minute adjustments to keep the hips over your heels. As you come to the bottom, simply bring your hands to the mat. Roll the shoulders up and back. If you're not yet there, no big deal. If you can't touch the mat, bring your hands, either hands to elbow or slightly rest your hands on your shins or even your thighs. Tuck the head. Let's really tuck the chin so we feel a nice lengthening from the crown of the head to the base of the spine.
Stepping back into pyramid pose. Lift the head first. Lengthen the back. That's going to cause your, you to come up onto your fingertips on the mat. Right foot. As you inhale, you step the right foot back behind you. Toes are pointing forward. Hips are squared towards the short side of the mat in front of you. This is the first position. In this position, I'm doing my best to keep my pelvis in between both legs. So I have equal weight on the front leg and the back leg. As I exhale, I extend my torso over that front leg, trying to bring my forehead to the left shin. Keep your hands on the floor for balance. Whether your hands are flat or on the fingertips, no big deal. Roll the shoulders up and back. If you feel or you have a tendency to lock your knees, go ahead, softly bend them just a fraction. You, you want to protect your knees. I'm still lifting the arch, exterior rotation of knees and hips. Feel weight on that right heel. Inhale, lift the head. Now lengthen the back. So that means that I'm lifting my torso. It's more or less parallel to the mat. In this position, as I exhale, I slide the right foot back. Bring the right knee down, and I come into a lunge. Now, in sun salutations, the way I teach it, I really don't care if your left knee is over the ankle or if it's squared up. Depends on your flexibility in the ankle, okay? What's important is that our hips are square. I'm not opening off to the side. Let's hold here, feeling a nice opening through this right hip flexor. If you do want to bring your left knee over the ankle, that's really nice because we can get a little bit more flexion in the left ankle. Hands can be on the mat. They can be resting lightly on the left knee. Importance here is squaring off. The right foot is not passive. There's a little bit of uh, focus and pushing down of the top of the right foot down against the mat. That's for balance and for keeping our right leg active. We're not dumping weight into the right leg. Let's come into a hamstring stretch while we're here. As you exhale, simply bring the hips behind you, straighten the left knee, bring the left toes up, keep the hips square. Hamstring stretch here. For now, let's just stay here. You don't need to bring your head down. Just stay nicely lengthened over your left leg. There's a tendency for us to sit on the right hip and throw the right hip to the right side. Again, we're not dumping our weight here. Right leg is still active, keeping the hip square. Hold here. Four. Three. Two. One. Inhale, let's come back to that lunge. If you feel good, go ahead, release the hands by your sides. Open up the palms. Inhale, arms up. Hold here. Sink the shoulders. If this is challenging, go ahead and keep your hands on the mat. No big deal. Exhale, bring your hands down to the mat. Inhale, step the left foot back, getting ready to come into downward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, let's keep your knees bent, but lengthen the back and lift the seat bones up towards the sky. Once you have that position, armpits are nice and open. Back is long. If you have the flexibility, go ahead and bring the knees down. But do not sacrifice the lengthening of the spine. I'd rather your knees are bent. From here, we're doing some variations. Bring the right knee down to the mat. 
and then slide that left foot or lift the left foot forward in front of both hands and you're back in a lunge. Curl the right toes under. As you inhale, lift the right knee off the mat, push off and bring the right foot to meet the left and then exhale down into forward fold. Bend the knees, lift the head, lengthen the back, extend the arms. In one inhale, coming right into back bend, but pass through your Tadasana first. Feel that alignment all in one inhale and come into back bend. Ready? Let's go. Inhale up, back bend, hold. Make your adjustments like we practiced. Three, two, one, inhale, come back to center. Bend the knees, exhale, forward fold. Find the hips over the heels as you come down. Stepping back with the left foot. So lift the head, lengthen the back, place your hands or your fingertips on the mat for stability. As you inhale, you take the left foot Step behind you, maybe two and a half feet. Left toes are pointing forward. Come into pyramid pose, equal weight on back foot and front foot. Knees are straight but not locked. As you exhale, see if you can extend the torso over the right leg, forehead to right chin. But what is most important is that your hips are square. So don't worry about the flexibility here in the hamstrings. It'll come with time. Let's draw the shoulders back, bringing attention to the shoulder blades, bringing them towards the spine, shoulders away from your ears. Three, two, one. Lift the head, lengthen the back now. My torso is parallel to the mat. As I exhale, I bend the left knee, come into a lunge, hold here. Again, I don't really care where your hands are, as long as we can open up through that left hip, square off the hip points, active left foot, meaning that the top of the left foot is gently bringing pressure against the mat. Shoulders are away from our ears. Bring your hands to the mat on either side of your right foot, hamstring stretch. As you exhale, bring the hips behind you, straighten the right knee, right toes come up. Think about lengthening the torso. As best you can, try not to hunch and roll the shoulders, but keep the back as nice and long as you can. Again, try not to let your left hip come out to the side. Keep it nicely under you. Hips are squared. Let's stay here, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, come back to the lunge. Once you feel squared off and steady, if you're comfortable, lift the torso, take the hands off the mat. Open the palms, inhale the arms up overhead. Drop the shoulder blades. Active left foot. Feel the opening through the left hip flexors in front. Slow the breath. We're just trying to release tension. Letting the muscles relax over the joints so that they can open up a little bit more. Exhale, let's release the hands back down to the mat. 
As you inhale, step the right foot back and exhale into downward facing dog. Again, remember the trick is to keep your knees bent in the beginning as you lengthen through the back and then without sacrificing the lengthening of the back. If you'd like, gently bring the heels down towards the mat. Now you can play with this. If you distance your feet on either side of the mat, it lessens the tension over the hamstrings and maybe you can bring your heels down if that's not yet in your practice. For more of a challenge, bring your feet together. Let's come back into a lunge by bringing the left knee down on the mat. Inhale, bring the right foot in front in between both hands and you're back into a lunge. So for those of us from downward facing dog who do not have the flexibility to simply bring the right foot or the left foot forward between the hands, this is a wonderful accommodation. You bring the opposite knee down first and then you move the foot forward and come back into lunge. Bring the hands down to the floor if they're not yet there. Curl the left toes under, coming into forward fold. As you inhale, you lift the left knee up, switch the weight a little bit forward to the right foot, and then you just give a little hop. Left foot meets the right. Exhale into forward fold. Bend the knees, extend the arms. Inhale, back bend. Hold here. Nice, strong, active back bend. Coming out, inhale, rise up. Feel the alignment. And then exhale, release the hands. Roll the shoulders up and back one time. Soften the gaze, soften the knees. Exhale, release. Let's come down onto the mat. If you have um, a yoga belt or a long towel that you can use to help put over your foot, go ahead and get that. Laying down on our spine, bringing the belt to the right foot, Laying down, we're in position. Again, when we're thinking about a flexibility, especially of the lower limbs, I would say most of the time it's really important that the hips are squared off. Because if one hip is uh, more open or if one hip is lifted higher or lower, you're no longer stretching through the hamstring. All you've done is open the hip joint rather than stretch the hamstring. So. Hips are squared off right now towards the sky. Both legs, toes, knees, and hips are pointing up. Left leg will stay extended. Using a pelvic tilt, let's simply raise the right foot up towards the sky. So all together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract, feel that tilt, and now you just float the leg up. Make any adjustments you need here to feel a nice stretch in the hamstring if you're feeling some tension in the back of your knee slightly bend the knee feel a little bit of flexion here in the knee but let's have a nice flex 90 degree angle uh, flexion on the ankle so that our foot is nice and flat let's hold here as best we can try and keep your shoulders on the mat neck is nice and loose Chin is in neutral position. Both my hips are squared off. There is a tendency, like I said, for, to let this right hip open and come forward. Keep your hips in the same line. Left leg, toes and knee are pointing up.
All right, remember what we talked about, the stretch reflex? That means that our body, after 90 seconds, begins to relax. That means that all those neurons that are going up and down from the muscle to the brain, they get fatigued, and the brain stops saying, contract, contract muscle to save your joint. It finally says, okay, I give up. Do what you want. And that's when you feel the relaxation. So let's hold this. For two minutes, slow, deep breath. Bring your focus to your breath because that is also going to work and influence the central nervous system for, re for relaxation. Okay, let's stop talking. Focus on your breath. Enjoy the pose. As you exhale, very slowly and gently release the right foot back down to the mat. Really try and think that you're hinging out of your right hip, leading with the right heel so that you elongate the leg as it comes down to the mat. Simply slip your foot now into the belt, the left foot, I'm sorry, and release the right. Square off your hips once more. Take a breath in. As you exhale, contract. Feel that small bit of a tilt in the pelvis. That's going to protect your lower back as you raise the left leg. Go ahead, come into position, making sure you're nice and square. Now, the reason why we ask you to hold these poses as quietly as you can is because every movement introduces a little bit of tension into the body and into the muscle that you're trying to relax. So we try and stay still in body, slow, deep breath. But now we also ask you to focus. Try not, try not to daydream because even those thoughts, they bring ripples of tension into the body that we're trying to relax. So we ask you to please focus on your breath as you inhale and exhale. If you're finding that challenging, I like to say to myself, I am present. I am present. That helps me stay on task. Let's stay here for two minutes, feeling a nice lengthening.
Gently coming out, same thing as you exhale, hinge from the hip, from the left heel, elongate the leg slowly as it goes down. Release the belt. Bringing both knees towards the chest. Take a breath in. Exhale, contract. Feel the tilt, float the knees up towards the chest, hands to knees, knees to chest. Hold here. Relax the glutes, relax the lower back and the abdominals. If you can, widen the shoulders towards the mat as you hold your knees with your biceps. Happy baby pose. Bring your hands in between your knees, grab your big toes or shins, and then open up into happy baby pose. Remember, if this isn't in your practice, you can always bring your hands on the outside of your thighs and hold them by the knees. That's perfectly fine. Hold here. Best of our ability, we have a nice flexion in the ankle. Feet are flat, facing the sky. I let my knees just fall outward and down towards the mat, letting gravity take them down wherever that is. You can move from side to side if you like. What we're trying to do here is lengthen the spine at the same time, feel an opening through the hips and in its eyes. And let's just stay here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. As you exhale, extend the knees and bring the legs together. So the legs are now extended up towards the sky. Exhale, roll forward back into Dandasana, our staff pose. And we all meet in Dandasana, arms extended up high, sink the shoulders, head is in neutral position. Exhale, release. Coming into the left side, Ekopatasana, pigeon pose. Bend the left knee. Just swing that right leg behind you, coming into pigeon pose. So here, remember the right leg from the toe to the knee to the hip point, doing our best to have it point downward. Left knee is slightly bent. Now, ideally, of course, and I know some of you can do it, there is a right angle between your left knee and your left ankle. And then your hips are squared down towards the mat. Obviously, that's impossible for me. So you simply bring the left foot a little closer in towards the body until you can bring both hip points down towards the mat. You can also put a cushion underneath your left buttocks. Let's bring our hands down onto the mat next to the knee or a little bit in front of it. Roll the shoulders up and back and feel a nice opening through the hip flexor on the right side, but also through the abdominals. Shine the heart. Let's hold here. We'll stay here for eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. As we exhale, let's bring the torso down onto our forearms. 
You can stay here or if you like, extend the arms, resting your head on the mat in front of your left knee. Keep squaring your hips down towards the mat. Don't be afraid to use that prop underneath your left buttocks. Let's stay here, eight. Seven. Six. Five. Slow the breath. Three. Two. And one. To come out, lift the head, lengthen the back. Use your hands for support. Lift up, bring the hands next to the knee or just in front of the knee. So if this pose is challenging or any pose is challenging, as we breathe, we try to explore where it feels uncomfortable. If we're trying to avoid the pain, we're actually introducing tension. So try to just dive into that place where it feels uncomfortable and breathe and explore what, what's happening. And if it becomes too much, then come out of the pose a little bit. Because through relaxation, you will make more progress. All right, let's switch sides. So bring your hands down on the mat or your forearms. Let's come into plank. Curl the right toes under. As you inhale, you lift up, slide the left foot back. You're in a plank, whether you're on your forearms or your wrists. And now slide that right knee forward. Left leg is extended behind you and come into pigeon on this side. You'll notice one side is going to be easier than the other. Make adjustments. Square off the hips. Let's come up to our hands. Hands are right next to the knee or slightly in front. Shine the heart, drop the shoulders. Again, you can use something underneath your right hip. You can see my right hip is not touching the mat. So just do the best you can. And let's hold. I'm doing my best to relax, relax that right hip down. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. As we exhale, let's come down to our forearms, resting the head on the mat. If it feels good, extend the elbows and deepen the pose a little bit. As long as you comfortably can, let your mind go right to that point where there's some discomfort and just invite it in. Just breathe. Don't fight it. Go with the flow for eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, lift the head, lengthen the back, use your hands as support, and lift the torso, bringing the hands next to the knee or slightly in front. Shine the heart, drop the shoulders. Coming back into plank, curl the left toes under, inhale, lift up to plank, 
straighten out that right leg, hold plank. Let's stay here. This actually feels good after that intense stretch. As you exhale, gently bring the knees down and come back into child's pose. But this time in child's pose, let's open up the knees as wide as the mat. And your torso is in between both knees, arms extended, forehead on the mat. Hold here. Coming back into Vajrasana, lift the head, lengthen the back, use the hand for support, and inhale, lift up, sitting on your heels, hands lightly resting on our thighs. All right, as we stay here, before we move into the next pose, just some words of encouragement. I came back from the States December 1st. My knees were so bad, I could barely get into a pigeon pose. But the reason why my knees were bad is because my hips were really closed. And so even though I'm nowhere near um, the full expression of this pose, I can now do it without pain. And what I'm trying to say to you is that if you keep up with your practice, and go slow in increments, centimeter by centimeter, you are going to find progress. You may or may not look like the yogis on magazines, but then that's not the goal. The goal is to see how you process your practice. And it will happen. It's all going to get better and better. So find a block or a cushion to put under your leg because we're going to do Hanuman Asana splits. We've opened up our hips. We've uh, opened up through the hip flexors in front. We've worked on the hamstrings. So now, let's do our left leg first. You're standing on your knees. Simply shift the weight to the right knee and step forward with the left. As you go down into your splits, you will find out if you like the block underneath your left thigh or underneath your right thigh. It's gonna be different depending on where you have your flexibility. So maybe you wanna put it on the high side if, if you're not sure where you are yet. I put my block down here where I think my thigh is gonna come down. Bend and put your hands on the mat so you have some stability. And then simply slide your legs apart until you can rest on your cushion or block. What is important here? Look, my hips, to the best of my ability, are squared. It's not open, it's squared off. Now, for some of you, and that's really cool, you can bring your hands down and lean over your front leg a little bit. That will help take some of the tension off the hip flexor. Maybe you can feel a little deeper release of tension this way. So go ahead and bring your hands down, torso a little bit forward. Let's stay here. If you uh, found this easy, go ahead and take your block and bring it down just a little bit so it's on the shorter side. Let's hold here. We're not going to hold long, don't worry. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, to come out, go ahead, just roll over to the left, take the block out, bend both knees, legs in front of you, and just kind of shake it out. All right, opposite side. So stand up on our knees once more. As you inhale, you shift your weight to the left knee and step forward with the right leg. Place your block where you think is going to be helpful. Place your hands on the mat. And as you exhale, slide your feet apart. 
come down. Again, some of you can hold this very nicely with your posture, torso up. Others it may feel a little bit more comfortable to bring your hands down, extend the torso over that front leg. Whatever works for you to feel that release of tension. Sometimes you feel more tension in the front leg. Other times it's more tension in the hip flexors on the left leg. Let's hold here. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Same thing, just kind of fall out to the right hip. Swing both legs together in front. And just shake it out. Go ahead, come into a nice, easy butterfly pose. For some of you, movement feels really good. For others, you might want to just sit in stillness. And as long as we're working on our hips, let's come into a nice straddle pose. Take your block with you or your cushion. Let's bring the block in front of us. Look at both your legs, toes, knees are all facing up towards the sky nicely. Go ahead and put a prop underneath your seat bones if you need to raise your hips just a little bit. Hands are in front of us, roll the shoulders back. Forward fold here, take a breath in. As you exhale, go ahead, walk those hands forward and then simply rest your forehead on the block. Now some of you I know can probably go all the way down. So if you can, go ahead, enjoy that. Really think about extending the spine over the mat rather than hunching your shoulders if you can go all the way down. Let's stay here. Stay here for another minute. Coming out of the pose, lift the head, lengthen the back, use your hands, inhale, draw your torso up. Find that nice sitting position so you feel that your spine is again aligned in the middle of your pelvis. Once you feel that position, then you can bring your legs together and shake it out a little bit. And as long as we have our block or our cushion, let's come into a supported shoulder stand. Remember, once you get in a position, do not move your neck from side to side. You know you're in the right position because there's absolutely no tension on the lower back. So you have to move your, your block around until it's right on that 
part of your spine between the coccyx and the lower lumbar where you can easily lift your legs up and feel no tension in the lower back. Weight is distributed across the shoulders and the back. Neck is free. I don't turn my head once I'm in, up in position. If you feel comfortable, go ahead, release the block and extend the arms to the sides or over your head. Let's stay here two minutes. Enjoy, close your eyes. In your mind, silently chant, I am present. Coming out safely, bend the knees, bring the hands to your block, plant the feet on the mat, gently lift the hips, taking the block out. Laying the hips on the mat. Exhale, extend both legs down. Arms are by your sides, palms up, and we're in Savasana.
If you can enjoy Savasana a little bit longer, please do so. Have a good day. If you're ready to come out, let's first observe our breath. And now gently start to bring motion into the toes and ankles. Fingers and wrists. Keeping her breath nice and slow. Staying present in our practice until we close. Bringing movement back to our knees and elbows. Shoulders, hips, perhaps gently rocking the hips from side to side, little easy spinal twists. Bringing the head float from side to side. Really just enjoying the processes. We bring movement back into the body. Enjoying the, the fluidity with which we're moving now, the easy breath. And then all together, as we exhale, go ahead, roll over to one side. You, using your hands, push against the floor as you exhale. Come to a nice, easy, steady, stable, seated position. Quietly observing the ease with which you bend your knees and ankles, hips are open. The ease with which we can align our spine, shine the heart, relax the shoulders and neck. Inhale, bring our hands to heart center. Sharing the pranava one time, take a breath in. Exhale, bowing down to the teacher within. And inhale, coming back up, opening the eyes. We're back in full awareness. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you tomorrow.